The Lord Jesus has said in the Bible, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came, and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Almighty God, the returned Lord Jesus of the last days, says, In this world, earthquakes will mark the beginning of the disasters. I shall first shift the world, that is, the earth, and this shall be followed by pestilence and famine. This is my plan, my steps. I shall maneuver everything to do service for me, to accomplish my management plan. All disasters will befall, one after another. All nations and all places will experience disasters. Plague, famine, flood, drought and earthquakes are everywhere. These disasters do not just happen in one or two places, nor will they be over within one or two days, but instead they will extend over a greater and greater area, and the disasters will become more and more severe. During this time, all manner of insect plagues will arise in succession, and the phenomenon of cannibalism will occur in all places. This is my judgment on all nations and peoples. In all nations and places of the world, earthquakes, famines, plagues, all manner of disasters occur frequently. As I do my great work in all nations and all places, these disasters will arise more severely than at any other time since the creation of the world. This is the beginning of my judgment of all peoples. In recent years, disasters all around the world have gotten much worse. Earthquakes, pestilence, famine, floods, droughts, and plagues of insects are happening more frequently and spreading everywhere. On January 12, 2010, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake in Haiti killed over 220,000 people. On February 27, 2010, an 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake struck in Chile. In March 2010, a drought befell five southwestern Chinese provinces. On August 7, 2010, there was a huge mudslide in Zhouchou County, Gansu Province in China. On September 4, 2010, New Zealand was hit by a 7.2 magnitude earthquake. On January 12, 2011, Australia was flooded. On March 11, 2011, a 9.0 magnitude earthquake hit the east coast of Japan, creating a giant tsunami. In March and April 2011, high temperatures in Germany and Switzerland led to wildfires. On June 4, 2011, a volcanic eruption happened in Chile. Between July and October of 2011, Bangkok, Thailand experienced its worst floods in 50 years. In July and August of 2011, East Africa suffered a major famine. In July and August of 2012, many states in the U.S. experienced record-breaking droughts. On July 21, 2012, Beijing, China was hit by extreme rainfall. In late October 2012, the U.S. was hit by Hurricane Sandy. In January 2013, a constant haze took over central and eastern China. In March 2013, a plague of locusts swept through Israel. In late March 2013, the first case of the H7N9 avian flu appeared in China. In June 2013, India was flooded. On August 25, 2013, strong winds caused fires to spiral out of control in California, resulting in its largest wildfire in history. In December 2013, the Middle East was blanketed by its first snowstorm in 100 years. On January 2, 2014, a cold wave hit North America. On September 27, 2014, 
the volcano in Japan's Mount Ontake erupted. In April 2015, an earthquake struck Nepal. In June 2015, a massive flood hit Tbilisi, Georgia. On January 4, 2016, a 6.8 magnitude earthquake hit northeast India. On February 6, 2016, an earthquake struck Mainong District in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. These facts alone are enough to make people see the truth that God's words and prophecies are currently being realized and fulfilled. Some people can't help asking, why are these disasters getting bigger and bigger and happening more frequently in recent years? Why does God keep sending natural disasters? Because mankind of the last days has been corrupted to the extreme by Satan. Evil, licentiousness, deceit, and greed. People scheme, struggle, and fight against each other for social status, fame, and fortune, causing multiple battles that never seem to end. They despise the truth, enjoy unrighteousness, and live in sin without a hint of repentance, even to the point of openly denying God, resisting God, and advocating evil. Even certain groups of believers within churches have begun to give in to temptation, choosing to pursue the world's evil trends instead and deriving their joy from sin. Such an evil and dark age is truly the reappearance of the days of Noah. The Lord Jesus has prophesied in the Bible, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. The Lord Jesus has returned in the last days, and this time he is the incarnate Almighty God, expressing all truth so that he can purify and save the whole of mankind and performing his judgment work of the last days. However, he is faced with the furious resistance and condemnation of the atheist government and prideful religious circles. There is not one person who actively seeks to know the truth and seeks the light, and there is certainly no one who actively searches for God's appearance and work. This shows that all of mankind has become so corrupt and evil that they've come to despise the truth and treat God as if he's their enemy. God is a holy and righteous God, and His disposition is completely unoffendable. When such a deeply corrupted mankind still doesn't confess and repent their sins to God, how could they not be destroyed by the great and terrible disasters that God is about to rain down upon them? Therefore, in the face of the imminent disaster, what are we supposed to do to be protected by God and survive through the worst of these disasters? perhaps in the same way God showed favor to Noah through the flood. Almighty God says, Look back to the time of Noah's Ark. Mankind was deeply corrupt, had strayed from the blessing of God, was no longer cared for by God, and had lost the promises of God. They lived in darkness without the light of God. Thus they became licentious by nature, abandoned themselves to hideous depravity. Such men could no longer receive the promise of God. They were unfit to witness the face of God, nor to hear the voice of God. For they had abandoned God, had cast aside all that He had bestowed upon them and had forgotten the teachings of God. Their hearts strayed farther and farther from God, and as it did, they became depraved beyond all reason and humanity, and became increasingly evil. Thus they came ever closer to death and fell under the wrath and punishment of God. Only Noah worshipped God and shunned evil, and so he was able to hear the voice of God and hear the instructions of God. He built the ark according to the instructions of God's word and assembled all manner of living creatures. And in this way, once everything had been prepared, God unleashed his destruction upon the world. Only Noah 
and the seven members of his family survived the destruction. For Noah worshipped Jehovah and shunned evil. I must tell you that in the time of Noah, men had been eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage to such a point that it was unbearable for God to witness. So he sent down a great flood to destroy mankind, and left behind only Noah's family of eight and all kinds of birds and beasts. In the last days, however, those kept by God are all those who have been loyal to him until the end. Though both were times of great corruption unbearable for God to witness, And mankind in both ages was so corrupt that he denied God as the Lord. All men in the time of Noah were destroyed by God. Mankind in both ages has grieved God greatly. Yet God has remained patient with men in the last days until now. Why is this? Have you never given thought to this? If you truly do not know, then let me tell you. The reason that God can deal graciously with men in the last days is not that they are less corrupt than men in the time of Noah, or that they have shown repentance to God. Much less is it that God cannot bear to destroy men in the last days, where technology has advanced. Rather, it is that God has work to do in a group of men in the last days, and this will be done by God incarnate himself. Furthermore, God shall choose a part of this group as his objects of salvation, the fruit of his management plan, and bring such men with him into the next age. If mankind wishes to have a good fate, if a country wishes to have a good fate, then man must bow down to God in worship, repent and confess before God, or else the fate and destination of man will unavoidably end in catastrophe. Almighty God's words clearly explain to us that only those who listen carefully to God's words and completely accept his salvation can survive under God's protection through even the most destructive of these disasters and enter the kingdom of God. On the other hand, anyone who doesn't seek the truth, refuses to listen to God's voice, and rejects God's salvation in the last days, shall be punished and destroyed in the midst of these horrible disasters. The following accounts are true stories taken from eyewitness reports that took place in China. While Wen Chuan County was struck by a terrible earthquake on May 12, 2008, there was one whole town that completely vanished. That was Qinping Township in Mianzhu City in Sichuan Province. There are very few people in the world who know about this due to attempts by the CCP to cover it up. Qinping Township was located northwest of Hanwang Town in Mianzhu City, hidden deep in the mountains. Before the earthquake, it was a lush and beautiful paradise, always filled with fresh air, clear waters, and blue skies, rich with kiwi fruit and ginkgo. God bestowed the land with beautiful scenery and an abundance of produce, all as a blessing just for the locals. But the town's citizens did not thank or worship God. Instead, they spent their time lusting after money and pursuing the pleasures of sin. Since Chinping Township possessed beautiful mountains, the cleanest water, and the purest natural oxygen, which was refreshing during the summer, it became a great place for rest and relaxation. Therefore, the locals began to heavily promote it as a prime location for agritainment and tourism. It became a popular leisure spot for government officials of all rankings and positions. Plenty of these officials desired to work within Qingping Township, and many provincial-level leaders also became regular visitors. 
The growing presence of these government officials led to a rise in business for hotels, KTVs, health clubs, spas, foot massage parlors, and hair salons. And so, even though Qingping Township was located deep in the mountains, it soon held the reputation of being a place of debauchery, neon lights, and glittering nightlife. The CCP officials took this beautiful place that was once a blessing bestowed by God and transformed it into the modern-day Sodom. Since Almighty God's work of the last days was carried out in mainland China, brothers and sisters from the Church of Almighty God went there many times to preach the gospel. But locals thought that they had plenty, living lives without any worries about food or clothing, so they didn't need God's salvation. Therefore, they rejected Almighty God's kingdom gospel every single time it was offered to them, and they slammed the door shut on God's salvation. They even abused the brothers and sisters of the Church of Almighty God, saying, Our lives are amazing right now. You come to preach the gospel to us because you have nothing better to do. We don't believe in God. We only believe in money. Despite how the brothers and sisters from the Church of Almighty God testified to them, telling them that only by accepting Almighty God's work of the last days can they receive salvation, they turned a deaf ear. The brothers and sisters urged them several times to understand that only those who worship God can live with God's protection and receive His blessings, while those who reject and resist Almighty God will all fall as victims of disaster and face punishment. But still the locals brushed this message aside. The people of Qinping Township ultimately refused Almighty God's salvation. Sadly, there wasn't a single person there who believed in Almighty God. Then, as we all know, at 2.28 p.m. on May 12, 2008, the earthquake erupted. Suddenly, the earth moved and the mountains shook. Giant boulders rolled down from the mountaintops. The air was filled with dust and the sky darkened. Some mountains even collapsed to the point of disappearing entirely. Qinping Township was in a valley, nestled between two large mountains. As the earthquake continued growing worse, the mountains shifted to the middle and closed in, and in a flash, they joined together. Qinping Township ended up being crushed under the mountain. The people in the township were all trapped under the rubble and buried alive. This town that chose not to worship God was left unprotected and instantly destroyed. This tragic occurrence reminds us of what's already been recorded in the Bible. When Jehovah God declared that he wanted to destroy Sodom, Abraham tried his best to plead with Jehovah God and asked him, if there were 10 righteous people found in this city, would you still decide to destroy it? Jehovah God responded and answered the question. If, in fact, there were 10 righteous people in this city, I would change my mind and not destroy it. As it turned out, Lot was the only righteous person in the city. Though it would put his own safety at risk, he saved two angels that were sent by God. In the end, only Lot and his two daughters were able to escape Sodom. Under the guidance of the two angels, Lot risked his life to save. The remaining people and the city were all destroyed by the fire and brimstone God rained down upon them. Therefore, this wicked and evil city of sin that did not dedicate itself to worshiping God disappeared from the earth forever. It could easily be said that Qinping Township was the modern-day Sodom. But its destruction did not inspire other people to self-reflect. People did not seek the reason behind God's fury and continued to fight against God with the thought that man will conquer nature, refusing to turn their lives around or change their ways, and still vainly trying to create a so-called beautiful home with just their own two hands. After the earthquake, the government invited members of the Provincial Design and Planning Institute and other high-level infrastructure engineers and technicians to participate in the investigation, selection, and design of a new site. The government poured funds into rebuilding Qinping Township. 
Not long after this, a brand new Qinping Township completed construction and was set up deep in the mountains. The township's government office, hospital, school, and residential buildings were all fully equipped with most up-to-date modern facilities. Just as the people were thanking the Communist Party for their good policy and celebrating their relocation to a new home, a massive storm suddenly appeared on August 15, 2009, which then triggered yet another mountain collapse. A large mudslide began to rush down the side of the mountain with the rage and ferocity of a savage beast, racing toward the new Qinping Township. Once again, in an instant, the newly rebuilt Qinping Township was completely buried beneath the mudslide. There were slopes on both sides, and both sides completely collapsed. You could only stand on one foot up there, like a blade. A cliff was formed. So many men I've broken bread with and worked with just suddenly disappeared. <sighs> it was too terrifying. Because of this earthquake disaster, the crematorium, it turns out that too many people were killed. Even if the crematorium burned 24 hours a day, they couldn't cremate all the bodies. Due to their sinfulness, the people living in Qinping Township refused to accept Almighty God's salvation in the last days and were left to be destroyed by catastrophic disasters twice. This is the great calamity that they brought upon themselves by rejecting Christ of the last days, Almighty God. It's just as Almighty God has said in His Word. If the people of a country or a nation are unable to receive the salvation and care of God, then such a country or nation will tread the road to ruin, toward darkness, and shall be annihilated by God. I want each and every man to see that all I have done is in the right and is an expression of my disposition. It is not the doing of man, least of all nature, that brought forth mankind. On the contrary, it is I who nourish every living being among all things. Without my existence, Mankind can only perish and suffer the invasion of plagues. None will ever again see the beauteous sun and moon, or the green world. Mankind shall encounter only the frigid night and the inexorable valley of the shadow of death. I am mankind's only salvation. I am mankind's only hope. And even more, I am he on whom the existence of all mankind rests. Without me, mankind will immediately become stagnant. Without me, mankind will suffer catastrophe and be trod upon by all manner of ghosts. Even though, none take heed of me. God is the only one who can provide mankind with salvation. If we abandon God's salvation in the last days, then no matter how much material wealth we possess, and no matter how high our social status might be, or how great our power is, it won't save us from a disaster. Almighty God says, the disaster is brought down by me, and of course orchestrated by me. If you cannot work for good in my presence, then you will not escape suffering the disaster. My mercy is for those who love me and deny themselves. And the punishment brought upon the wicked is proof of my righteous disposition. And much more, testimony to my wrath. When disaster comes, Famine and plague will befall all those who oppose me, and they will weep. Those who have committed all kinds of evil during their many years as my follower shall not be guiltless. They too will live in a constant state of panic and fear amidst the disaster that has scarcely been seen through the ages. 
and all my followers who have been loyal to no other shall rejoice and applaud my might. They will experience ineffable contentment and live in a joy that I have never before bestowed upon mankind. For I treasure the good deeds of men and abhor their evil deeds. Almighty God's word tells us that all disasters are started by God and manipulated by God. God uses disasters as a method to destroy all of the evildoers who resist him, and also as a warning to awaken those groups of people who truly have hearts and spirits, guiding those people and helping them come before him to accept his salvation of the last days. This is the work that God is doing in the last days. People who don't believe in God will think that disasters are just natural occurrences that don't target their victims. Actually, every disaster is sent with its own specific purpose to fulfill. How many people end up getting killed in just one earthquake or plague? How many people will be reported as casualties, as the end result of a flood or a war? Which of these disasters destroy which kind of people? These things are all preordained by God. Those who are doomed can't escape. God's disposition is holy, righteous, and unoffendable. In the face of various disasters, anyone who does evil and resists God can't escape the righteous hand of God's punishment, no matter what measures they may use to try and help themselves. While those who genuinely believe in and rely on Almighty God will be able to avoid death, even if they're at the very center of an earthquake, God will use miraculous ways to protect them from the destruction and save their lives. For this next part, we're going to share with you the true experiences of some of the brothers and sisters in the Church of Almighty God, who received God's protection and salvation in the areas hit the hardest during the Sichuan earthquake of May 12, 2008. My husband and I had accepted Almighty God's work for just two months. And since I'm paralyzed, for the most part, my body is immobile. I spend most of my time confined to my bed. At the time, we lived on the fifth floor. When the earthquake struck, the building shook violently. The bed suddenly jolted and I was flipped out. As soon as I landed on the floor, the roof collapsed, falling on and crushing the bed. Then another piece of the ceiling fell, but it was blocked by a chair, which created a safe space right where I was lying on the floor. I didn't get hurt at all. At the time, a thought occurred in my mind. It said to crawl forward and see if I can find a way out. So I did start to crawl forward. I pushed aside the brick and I saw light. Then I started calling out for help. I didn't expect my eldest son to hear me, but he began to dig, and I was rescued three hours later. When the earthquake hit, my husband was in the bathroom. When he heard me calling for help, he tried running out to me, but he was trapped twice inside by the bathroom door. It was at this time that the ceiling collapsed, and a bamboo basket dropped down on him. My husband was protected by sitting inside the bamboo basket. He was trapped in the rubble for 30 hours. Just when he was panicking and not sure of what to do, he prayed to God and handed his life over to God. God gave him strength and faith, and he was able to calm himself down and wait patiently. At that time, my son was trying to get the soldiers to help my husband. They were afraid of danger and refused to help us. But after my son continued begging with them, they finally dug a hole and pulled my husband out. Thanks be to God. My eldest son worked at the Dongfang Turbine Factory. On that day, he happened to switch shifts with someone else, so he didn't go to work. Afterward, we found out that many people at his factory died. Thanks to the shift change, my son avoided getting killed. 
My seven-year-old grandson attended Donqui Elementary School. He crawled out from a hole after the earthquake. And he wasn't injured at all. Praise God. Thanks be to God. We're truly thankful for Almighty God. Thanks be to God. Because of the faith my husband and I put in Almighty God, all three generations of our family received God's wondrous protection. Praise God. Almighty God's love is too wonderful. I'll talk about it forever. Yes, praise God. On the day of May 12th, I was harvesting rapeseed in my own field up on Legu Mountain. Suddenly, I felt the earth begin to shake and the world was spinning. But at first, I thought I was suffering a heat stroke. Then, after a while, I saw the mountains rocking and swaying back and forth. It was real. Soon, cracks several meters wide opened, and I saw falling rocks start flying toward me. I realized that it was an earthquake. I tried my best to avoid the danger, while constantly praying in my heart for God to help me. I said, Oh God, my Savior, I know the disaster is in your control. You brought this to chastise all the disobedient and wicked. This is your righteousness, and I know I possess many things that you detest. No matter how you chastise me, I'm willing to obey you. Even if I'm swallowed by the earth like the 250 leaders who opposed Moses, I will praise your righteousness. I just kept praying like that and promising to be obedient. And slowly, my heart stopped, feeling so frightened and anxious, and it became calm and peaceful. Then afterward, something so unexpected happened. I personally got to witness God's wondrous deed. Since the earthquake was so powerful, the mountain where I was standing just split open as if it was carved with a knife. Half the mountain next to me just collapsed down to the earth in a straight line, but the half where I was standing didn't collapse at all, and I ended up without a single scratch on me. Thanks be to God. During this, my family saw the mountain where I was working collapsed from far away. They all thought I had been killed. No one thought that I would come back to them, that I was alive and well. My whole family was emotional. Non-believers who heard my story told me I was just lucky. However, I know that luck didn't save me. It was God's protection and care. I shared my experience with many of our brothers and sisters. Afterward, they all said, Almighty God is too omnipotent, too wondrous. Thanks be to God. During the day on May 12th, I had been on a bus going to Sangzhou Township. A dozen people were on the bus. At 2.28 p.m., the bus had driven to the foot of a mountain. The bus started to shake violently, and then there were the deafening sounds of an impact. I knew it was an earthquake. These rocks were constantly falling from the mountain, blocking the front and back of the bus and destroying its roof. Inside the bus, it was chaotic. People kept running outside. Also, they were shouting to heaven. Some calling to Buddha, some to Guan Yin. It was making me very anxious. Because I knew that they were praying to false gods and evil spirits. Calling to these things wouldn't save them. So I cried out, Call to Almighty God! You have to pray to Him! But at the time, no one was listening to me. They were trying to escape. And soon, everyone else on the bus had run off, leaving me behind alone. So then I kept crying out, Almighty God, save me! After the earthquake, I got out of the bus. Of the people who ran off of the bus, some had been killed, while others were injured. Everyone who survived had all thought that I would be crushed to death. But when they all saw me alive and without a single scratch on me, they all said that it must have been some kind of miracle. They all wanted to know how I had survived. So I said 
that I believe in Almighty God and that I asked Almighty God to protect me while I was on the bus. So God had listened to my prayer and he saved me. After listening to me, they all believed in Almighty God. A few days later, I encountered an aftershock at the foot of a mountain while walking with a dozen people. The rocks on the mountain kept falling down, and since the road was very long, the other people were afraid. We really had a difficult problem. Just when everyone was panicking and unsure of what to do, I started to yell out to them, Listen to what I say! Don't call out to Buddha, and don't call to Guan Yin! Everyone call out to Almighty God! Then those people joined me in calling out to Almighty God. With that, we passed through that dangerous road in complete safety. Praise, Praise God. God. You see, my father-in-law usually naps in the afternoon. But around noon on the day of May 12, my father-in-law was complaining that he simply couldn't sleep. So he went to spray pesticide in our field. I went with him too to pull up weeds. But as soon as we got there, the earthquake happened. At that point, our house completely collapsed. But we weren't inside, so we weren't harmed at all. It was after the two of us had left. It really was God's wondrous protection. Praise, Praise God. God. My daughter at that time was 10 years old. She was at school on the day of the earthquake. Every building at her school had totally collapsed. And most of the children in her class ended up being crushed. Only four children survived. Among them, only my daughter was completely unharmed. The other three were found seriously injured. I'm thankful to Almighty God. If it weren't for Almighty God's protection and care, there's no way my family would have been able to survive such a major disaster. Praise, Praise God. God. Thanks be to God. Through these real cases we've listened to, we can see very clearly that even people who have been so deeply corrupted to the point that they deserve to be destroyed, if they can confess their sins to God, leave their evil behavior behind them, and come before God's presence to accept God's salvation, then God will show them mercy and grace and give them his protection and care, even if they're amid the worst possible disasters. But as for those who pursue lives filled with evil and sin, who don't confess it and choose to abandon God's salvation of the last days, they will fall just like the people of Qinping Township, and in the end they will be subjected to God's righteous punishment for their evil deeds. It's just as Almighty God says, God used his attitude to tell people the following. It is not that God does not tolerate people, or he does not want to show mercy to them. It is that they rarely truly repent toward God, and it is rare that people truly turn away from their evil ways and abandon the violence in their hands. In other words, when God is angry with man, he hopes that man will be able to truly repent. And he hopes to see man's true repentance. In which case he will then liberally continue to bestow his mercy and tolerance upon man. This is to say that man's evil conduct incurs God's wrath. Whereas God's mercy and tolerance are bestowed upon those who listen to God and truly repent before him upon those who can turn away from their evil ways and abandon the violence in their hands. God's attitude was very clearly revealed in his treatment of the Ninevites. God's mercy and tolerance are not at all difficult to obtain. He requires one's true repentance, as long as people turn away from their evil ways and abandon the violence in their hands. God will change his heart and change his attitude toward them. If you are a true Christian, then you will surely believe 
that the rise and fall of any country or nation occurs according to the designs of God, the designs of God. God alone knows the fate of a country or a nation. God alone knows the fate of a country Wow.